Really, Peter, not that surprising given all of the problems that the Vision Fund has faced. I do wonder, though, where are the cuts happening? Because we know that Japan has pretty strict labor laws. Yeah, that's, um, yeah, that's a good point. Uh, y you're right. It's not a huge surprise. Uh, we saw the Vision Fund announce losses of about $18 billion on their portfolio investments. Uh, so we know things are going in the wrong direction there. They, they they don't need the kind of staffing that they've had in the past. So sources are telling us that they're planning these cuts. The Vision Fund, of course, is based in London. So our understanding is that the focus of the uh, cuts is going to be in London. They also have offices in other parts of the world, including California and Tokyo. Uh, so they're trimming back uh, across the board. Uh, they haven't made any of these details public at this point, so we're doing this based on sources. Uh, but our understanding is that it should you know, that, it, that it's likely to touch those offices. And we're seeing SoftBank unwinding its holdings and a lot of investments. Are we seeing that continue, this kind of fire sell, as it tries to regain control of the situation? Yeah, the backstory is that at SoftBank Group, uh, after a, a pretty steep decline in the share price, uh, Masayoshi Son announced a buyback uh, of his stock, which he's been proceeding with, and that they were going to sell uh, more than $40 billion in assets. So we've seen them take some steps in that direction. Uh, they've sold off a chunk of their Alibaba stock. They have an enormous holding in, in Alibaba, the Chinese e-commerce company, of course. They're selling a, uh, a bit of their domestic wireless operation, which is SoftBank Corp., uh, and then they own a stake in T-Mobile, the U.S. wireless operator, uh, because they merged Sprint into that and got an equity stake. So, so sources have told us that they're also selling a big chunk of that business to raise cash, and they're going to use that to buy back the stock and then also um, to pay down some of the debt that they've got. So what's next for SoftBank, Peter? Because we have seen these historic losses for the company, for Vision Fund as well. And what a difference a year has made, right? So if they're trying to really offset all of these losses, what's in store in the future when these portfolio companies seem to be suffering? Yeah, for uh, the Vision Fund in particular, this is a cleanup job. You're, you're exactly right. A year ago, uh, the fund was reporting record profits, and then we got this record loss of $18 billion. Um, it's really a cleanup job. They have about uh, 90 startups in that portfolio. Uh, we've heard mostly about the big disasters there. We work as the most... Um, glaring example of that. They wrote down that company yet again. At one point, it was worth $47 billion. They now have it on the books at, at about $3 billion, so much, much lower. But within that, there's also scores of companies that we haven't really written about, we haven't heard that much about. And some of those companies, certainly the partners there, are hoping that they're going to be able to regain ground and uh, do reasonably well. Many of them are involved in the sharing economy. Uh, so not just sharing office space, but also uh, sharing uh, cars or uh, other kinds of assets. So the ride-hailing companies, which is the biggest bet uh, from the Vision Fund, those companies are also struggling a bit at this point. We've seen it in Uber's share price, but SoftBank also has a stake in Grab in Southeast Asia, in Didi in China, and all these companies are kind of struggling uh, with the new rules of the game after the coronavirus.